Dragonfly Energy is a proud publicly traded American company. And as a comprehensive lithium ion battery and green energy technology leader, we are focused on enabling the widespread deployment of renewable energy sources through safe, reliable, and clean energy storage innovations. We have over 10 years of research and development and a robust portfolio of over 85 filed and pending patents. So you can imagine we have some exciting developments happening behind the scenes. While there is a lot we can't talk about publicly just yet, I want to give an inside look at some of the things we do in the lab. In order to improve upon current battery technology, it's crucial to understand the fundamentals of how lithium-ion batteries work. In recent years, we have invested in our own infrastructure with the sole purpose of having an in-house, comprehensive understanding of lithium-ion batteries from materials and chemistries to cell cycling, prototyping, implementing cells into battery packs, and more. This is one of the imperative differences between us and others in the space who are simply importing or assembling battery packs. We have a very clear picture of the integral parts that make up lithium ion batteries and where our research will take us. In order to capture this crucial research and data, we have partnered with some of the top instrumentation companies in the world to utilize cutting edge equipment and make rapid strides in new cell designs, chemistries, and performance. Let's take a look. Through our collaborations with scientific leaders, including Bruker and Tescan, we've been really able to perform crucial tests and gather data using equipment to continue advancing our research and technological advancements. We're now painting a complete picture of lithium ion technology so we can ensure we're designing sustainable, safe, quality and electroactive materials all the way up to a fully assembled battery pack using advanced equipment and instruments, including everything from XRD, NMR, XRF, FTIR, Raman, SCM, and much more. With the investments in our own infrastructure and through these crucial collaborations with companies like Bruker and Tescan, we've also recognized that all of our advancements and research goes beyond the equipment, and that's the people. Dragonfly Energy stands as a leader with a team of experienced and renowned specialists that are able to properly utilize our world-class equipment interpret data, and most importantly, put it to use. So we've been able to give you guys some detail on the infrastructure and instruments we leverage to fire up the pilot line and start scaling up our dry battery electrode process and onshoring our cell production. Now we can dive a little bit in further depth into how we study those materials and processes in a really fundamental manner before we ever actually get to scale up. And what this really allows us to do is innovate chemistries not only in conventional cell settings, but next generation solid state uh, cells as well. So you can see here everything from imaging of individual particles that are feedstock that are going to go into our process for quality control to studying the surfaces of the electrodes themselves after they come off the line is something we're very capable of doing in real time to inform our production. Yeah, I think it's important to note that since the process is so different than a conventional slurry coating process, there could be some differences in terms of how the binder is distributed and how the film adheres and how the, uh, the overall performance and the, the, the fundamental properties of the film uh, affect the behavior of the cell. And that's why we do all this. We need the analytical capabilities, not just to look at how our cells perform, but how they perform compared to conventional slurry casting and conventional manufacturing processes. And that's, that's why we've built such a great lab here. So when we start with the cathode, there's a bunch of things we can do. First, when it comes off the line, we can look at how the particles are spaced, how the LFP is in contact for electrical conductivity purposes with the rest of the grains on the tape. But then with advanced techniques such as tossums and SEM and these sorts of things, we can go into the cell after we've cycled it and actually look for things such as trapped lithium and conduct real post-mortem analysis. And that's really important because at the end of the day, that's what really helps us understand why our cells are failing. Yeah, this is really cool. This is, this is the cross-section of an LFP cathode. And you can see the lithium iron phosphate grains. You can see some carbon grains that carry the electron in and out. It's all connected together with a binder. And you can see the holes in between everything. That's where the liquid electrolyte has to kind of percolate through and filter through. And so you get the, the, the lithium ion going in and out through this network, and then the electron coming out and going through the load. Um, and this image is awesome, because this is a cross-section 
it was cut with an ion beam. So this is, it's like ions cu cutting the cross section and each time it makes a cut, you get all these molecules and ions fly off and we take a, what's called a time of flight mass spectrum. So we know what's in every pulse that comes off here. And this is an image of lithium. We just looked at the atomic mass corresponding with lithium and it's color coded with how much lithium there is. And this is interesting because this is a, a, I guess we would call it a poorly performing cell because all these red spots are a high concentration of lithium. This is a fully charged cell. So you'd expect all the lithium to be in the anode and not in the cathode. And here you can see some buildup of trapped lithium uh, in, in the cathode. So anyone that's really studied lithium ion batteries knows that the key is the anode and the solid electrolyte interface that allows for the cell to cycle over a long period of time. So it's really important for us to go into the anode tapes after they've been pressed and study the anode grains themselves and look for signs of degradation and an imperfect SCI, such as uh, co-intercalation and exfoliation. So this anode has a series of graph graphite particles. And if you look at a close-up of the graphite particle, you'll see that it is comprised of these very uh, thin graphitic planes that are kind of stacked. That, that's what a graphite particle is. And when, when you charge a battery, the lithium ion comes in between those planes in a process called intercalation. Um, but what can happen is if more than the lithium ion comes in, like if you drag in some of the solvent with you from the electrolyte, then it can cause these, these uh, plates to kind of break apart. And once that happens, it renders that uh, particular grain useless and it degrades the, uh, the battery in terms of capacity. So that last image on the right is really cool too because it takes that TOSIMS mass spec analysis one step further. You know, on the previous slide we saw us tracking lithium across a cathode. Well, we've done the same thing here with red in terms of lithium and the anode. We've gone a step further to track the binder as well, which is shown as yellow. And so what you can really study with that kind of data is where is lithium trapped and why is it trapped? Is it electrically isolated? Has the graphite been damaged? Or is it a combination of those two or other uh, mechanisms? QC can also get relatively complicated. When feedstock powders come out and are ready for our dry battery electrode process, it's very important we understand whether they're coated properly and the additives we add to electrodes, such as carbon conductors, are distributed properly in those systems. Yeah, the feedstock process is it's an important part of our technology that we've developed because what we're referring to is before we uh, dry powder coat the electrodes, all the electrode grains are encapsulated in the binder in a process uh, that we've patented. And that what's really important here is that all the grains are completely encapsulated. And so we, we do a lot of analysis, especially just basic imaging, uh, scan electron microscopy, to see how the grains and the carbon, uh, the electron conducting carbon, are encapsulated in the binder that we want to use. So what we're seeing are some graphite and different anode particulates that have been coated using that spray drying process on the right and images of those individual particles. So you can see carbon and binder and a lot of the other constituents mixed in to create a nice anode mix. And then what you see here is a Raman spectra. And Raman spectroscopy really allows us to study the carbon in greater detail. So if we want to understand how well is the LFP carbon coated for charging and discharging purposes, or how much conductive carbon do we have in an anode tape versus ordered graphite, that's what Raman can be really helpful for understanding. So the anode or the cathode is a complex mixture of the intercalation material, which is either the lithium iron phosphate or the graphite, the carbon electron conductor, and the binder. So it's a big jumble, a big mess. And the way we get it to mix really well beforehand is with this process. So this amalgamation you see here, this mess of substances, is graphite, carbon, and the binder. I think the most advanced and most exciting stuff we do in fundamental science arena here at Dragonfly is taking all of these analyses a step further and applying them to the battery while it's actually operating in its standard conditions. So what do I mean by that? We can look at analytical chemistry, such as NMR, to study the chemical reaction products of this very complex system at different voltages inside the battery under its normal operating conditions while it's cycling. If we want to zoom into the electrodes themselves in higher detail and study their lattice structures, we can look at X-ray diffraction. So with X-ray diffraction, we can study the effects of lithium moving in and out of these lattices and the reactions that are occurring 
and why those cause degradation in the electrode tapes over time. And lastly, you can go into extremely high resolution using techniques like scanning, transmission, electron microscopy, or STEM. And you had mentioned we look for graphite exfoliation, the spreading of those planes in the graphite as signs of degradation. You go one step further and zoom in to study what those species are exactly that penetrated into those planes that weren't pure lithium. So these techniques have been around for quite some time, NMR, TEM. Uh, NMR is nuclear magnetic resonance. It, it's used in medical imaging for MRIs, for example. But this is what's state of the art about it, is when, when Vic said that we're looking at it in operation, this, this is called in situ measurements. We are actually charging and discharging the cell while making the measurements, which, we, which means we can observe the lithium ions going back and forth and reacting, intercalating. Um, we can see what is in a metal form or a salt form. Um, and of course, transmission electron microscopy lets you see really at, at, at the sub-nanometer level. Uh, so we're, we're talking very, very fine scale uh, structure, which, you know, li lithium ion batteries are, they can be big systems, but ultimately what happens at the nanoscale, the atomic scale is what matters. There are many developments continuing to happen behind the scenes, which we will be thrilled to share with you very soon. Stay in touch with us for what's to come here at Dragonfly Energy.